Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups and he has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study in a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join at https colon double forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash 32913646414908 Speech vs writing. When we talk about language, sometimes we mean speech, spoken language, sometimes writing, written language. How are they different? Of course, speech is spoken and heard, while writing is written and read. In his 1975 report, A Language for Life, Lord Bullock said, not enough account is taken of the fundamental differences that exist between speech and writing. Spoken and written language are obviously different, with different purposes. Written language is permanent, the reader can go back over it again and again if the meaning is not immediately clear. This is not possible with speech, which is fleeting and ephemeral. Writing does not usually involve direct interaction, except for personal letters and perhaps some computer-based communication such as email. Children learn to speak before they learn to read and write. Learning to speak appears to happen naturally within the home, whereas learning to read and write is usually associated with the beginning of formal schooling. Thus, we often assume that written language is more difficult to learn, and we perceive speech as less complex than written language. This is not the case, oral language is just as linguistically complex as written language, but the complexity is of a different kind. The inevitable differences in the structures and use of speech and writing come about because they are produced in very different communicative situations. The greatest differences between speaking and writing are those between formal written texts and very informal conversation. Because it is permanent, writing provides opportunities for more careful organization and more complex structures. Formal spoken language is often pre-planned, but most spoken language is spontaneous and rapid and usually involves thinking on the spot. It has simpler constructions and fillers such as um and er. It has repetitions and rephrasing. It has intonation patterns and pauses that convey meaning and also attitudes. All these oral characteristics help the listener to understand the speech. It is usually much more difficult for listeners to interpret language that is read aloud from a written text, where the language is more dense and lacks the pauses and fillers that give us time to absorb the spoken message. Lectures or talks that are read from a script are usually more difficult to follow than those that are delivered with the speaker looking at the audience and improvising from outline notes. What is spoken language? Spoken language is the language we speak. It is often spontaneous and transient. Spoken language is used for interactions. The two speakers or the listener and the speaker are often in the same place. Thus, they can correct any mistake they make and change their utterances as they go along. With the exception of scripted speeches, spoken language tends to be full of incomplete sentences, repetitions, interruptions, and corrections. Speakers also use gestures, tone, pitch, volume, etc. to create additional meaning in spoken language. Unless the conversation is recorded, there is no record of the spoken language conversation that took place. Some forms and informal grammatical structures are also specific to spoken language. For example, words and phrases like my bad, you know, busted ain't etc. which are sometimes used in spoken language, are rarely used in written language. What is written language? Written language is the language we use to write. The main two language skills used in written language is reading and writing skills. Written language is not transient like spoken language, it tends to be permanent since there are written records of it. Once you have written something, it is not very easy to change it. 
Another interesting thing about written language is that the reader and writer are usually communicating across time and space, unlike in spoken language. Written language is typically more formal, complex and intricate than spoken language. It may contain longer sentences in complex tenses. However, some forms of written language like instant messages and informal letters are closer to spoken language. Written language can make use of features like punctuation, headings, layouts, colors, etc. to make a message clearer. Since written language does not receive immediate feedback, it should be very clear and unambiguous. Difference between spoken and written language Written language and spoken language differ in several ways. Those differences affect subtitling, a practice that has become more prevalent recently as a way to translate what the speaker is saying for those of other languages or who are deaf. Spoken versus written language. A key difference between written and spoken languages is that written language tends to be more formal and complex than spoken language. Other differences are. Writing is more permanent and less easily changed. Once something is printed, or on the web, it is out there permanently. Unless the speaker is recorded, however, they can restate their position. Except in the case of formal speeches, spoken language is more impromptu. Because of that, it often includes repetitions, interruptions, and incomplete sentences. Writing is more polished. Because written language is more complex, it requires punctuation. Punctuation has no equivalent in spoken language. Writing communicates across time and space for as long as the medium exists and that particular language is understood. Speech is more immediate. Except with text messages, computer chats, or similar technology, writers can't receive immediate feedback to know whether their message is understood or not. Speakers do receive feedback and can clarify or answer questions as needed. Written and spoken communication use different types of language. Slang and tags, for example, are more often used when speaking. Spoken language involves speaking and listening skills, while written language requires writing and reading skills. The spoken language uses tone and pitch to improve understanding, written language can only use layout and punctuation skills. Spoken language involves speaking and listening skills. Written language involves reading and writing skills. Age. Spoken language is older than written language. Written language is not as old as the spoken language. Complexity. Spoken language is more informal and simple than written language. Written language is more formal and complex than spoken language. Users. Spoken language is mostly used between two people who are in the same place. Written language promotes communication across space and time. Components. Spoken language can use tone, pitch, volume, etc. Written language can use heading, punctuation, layouts, etc. Records. Spoken language is temporary since there are no records. Written language is permanent since there are records. Features. Spoken language contains repetitions, incomplete sentences, interruptions, corrections, etc. Written language is often grammatically correct and may contain long sentences in complex tenses. Here are three critical differences between writing and speaking. One repetition. One of the differences between writing and speaking is the use of repetition. In writing, you usually want to avoid being repetitive. Repetitive writing is not very creative and can often cause the reader to become bored. In addition, repetition isn't necessary because of the ability to instantly go back and reread something if you missed it. In speaking, however, repetition is actually necessary. Audiences don't listen very closely to the exact words you're saying, so you need to repeat your key messages early and often. Just as road signs remind you of where you are when you're driving, repeating key points reminds your audience of where you are when you're presenting. Two complex sentences. 
Another one of the differences between writing and speaking is the use of complex sentences. In writing, complex sentences can be necessary for adding the right level of detail and precision. Plus, complex sentences can be made easier to read with the right punctuation. However, complex sentences are deadly for your speaking. They flatten your delivery, causing you to drone on and on. In addition, speaking requires something fundamental that writing does not, breathing. So, make sure you're giving yourself time to breathe by limiting your use of complex sentences. Three word choice. Finally, writing and speaking differ in terms of the importance of word choice. In writing, you usually want to choose your words very carefully, as people can go back and reread. A well-chosen word can often make or break the point you're making. In speaking, the exact words you choose aren't nearly as important as the general point you're trying to make. Just as you remember the melodies of songs, not the specific notes, your audience will remember your ideas, not your specific words. So, don't obsess over making sure every word you say is absolutely perfect. You can absolutely be both a great writer and a great speaker. But if you want to accomplish this feat, you need to understand the nuances between the two. By being thoughtful about the differences between writing and speaking, you will get much better at both. Writing vs. Speech Written and spoken language differ in many ways. However some forms of writing are closer to speech than others, and vice versa. Below are some of the ways in which these two forms of language differ. Writing is usually permanent and written texts cannot usually be changed once they have been printed forward slash written out. Speech is usually transient, unless recorded, and speakers can correct themselves and change their utterances as they go along. A written text can communicate across time and space for as long as the particular language and writing system is still understood. Speech is usually used for immediate interactions. Written language tends to be more complex and intricate than speech with longer sentences and many subordinate clauses. The punctuation and layout of written texts also have no spoken equivalent. However some forms of written language, such as instant messages and email, are closer to spoken language. Spoken language tends to be full of repetitions, incomplete sentences, corrections and interruptions, with the exception of formal speeches and other scripted forms of speech, such as news reports and scripts for plays and films. Writers receive no immediate feedback from their readers, except in computer-based communication. Therefore they cannot rely on context to clarify things so there is more need to explain things clearly and unambiguously than in speech, except in written correspondence between people who know one another well. Speech is usually a dynamic interaction between two or more people. Context and shared knowledge play a major role, so it is possible to leave much unsaid or indirectly implied. Writers can make use of punctuation, headings, layout, colors and other graphical effects in their written texts. Such things are not available in speech. Speech can use timing, tone, volume, and timbre to add emotional context. Written material can be read repeatedly and closely analyzed, and notes can be made on the writing surface. Only recorded speech can be used in this way. Some grammatical constructions are only used in writing, as are some kinds of vocabulary, such as some complex chemical and legal terms. Some types of vocabulary are used only or mainly in speech. These include slang expressions, and tags like you know, like, etc. When we talk about language, sometimes we mean speech, spoken language, sometimes writing, written language. How are they different? Of course, speech is spoken and heard, while writing is written and read. But there are many other differences. Age. Speech goes back to human beginnings, perhaps a million years ago. Writing is relatively recent, however, it was first invented by the Sumerians, in Mesopotamia, around 3200 BC.
Since then, the idea of writing has spread around the world and different writing systems have evolved in different parts of the world. Universality. Humans everywhere can speak. But before the Sumerian invention, people were non-literate. Even now there are many non-literate groups, for example in New Guinea, and many non-literate people in officially literate societies. Acquisition. People everywhere start speaking during the first two years of life. Many of the abilities involved are probably inborn rather than learned. Learning to write typically builds on learning to speak. Levels of structure. Speech consists of two types of basic units, phonemes or units of sound, which are themselves meaningless, are combined into morphemes, which are meaningful units, so the phonemes forward slash b forward slash, forward slash i forward slash, forward slash t forward slash form the word bit. Alphabetic scripts work the same way. In a different type of script, the syllabubri, the basic unit, corresponds to a spoken syllable. Japanese and Cherokee use this system. In logographic script, for example Chinese, each character corresponds to an entire morpheme, usually a word. For further information on scripts, see Daniels and Bright 1996. Interdependence. Most literate people can convey the same messages in either speech or writing, but speech typically conveys more explicit information than writing. Hebrew and Arabic scripts indicate consonants but often omit symbols for vowels. In Chinese, the symbols that correspond to words may give no indication of pronunciation, or only partial cues. The spoken and written forms of a given language tend to correspond on one or more levels and may influence each other, as when through is spelled through. Conversely, in spelling pronunciation, people may come to pronounce the T in often even though historically it had been lost. Some formal literary styles, like classical Chinese, acquire a life of their own in written form and have little direct relationship to speech. Retrievability until the invention of magnetic recording, speech could not be captured or preserved, except by fallible memories and by writing. But writing can be preserved for millennia. Its permanence has made possible such human institutions as libraries, histories, schedules, dictionaries, menus, and what we generally call civilization. Literary use. Non-literate societies have traditions, songs, rituals, legends, myths, composed orally and preserved by memory. Such texts may be called oral literature. By contrast, writing permits what is more often called literature, i.e. bodies of text which are much larger and more codified than memory permits. Yet even in literate societies, dramatic performance and reading aloud remain important traditions. Prestige. Written language is associated with political and economic power, admired literature, and educational institutions, all of which lend it high prestige. In literate societies, people often come to think of their written language as basic, they may regard speech as inferior. Nevertheless, writing can be perceived as colder or more impersonal than speech. Standardization. Spoken languages have dialects, forms varying across geographical areas and social groups. But in complex societies that use writing, the needs of communication encourage moves toward a single written norm, codified by governmental, educational, and literary institutions. The prestige of the written standard is then likely to influence speech as well. Formality. Communication may be formal or casual. In literate societies, writing may be associated with formal style and speech, with casual style. In formal circumstances, oratory, sermons, a person may talk like a book, adapting written style for use in speech. Formal and informal styles may be very distinct, for example in Arabic, and can virtually be different languages. Change. Spoken language, everywhere and always, undergoes continual change of which speakers may be relatively unaware. Written language, because of its permanence and standardization, shows slower and less sweeping changes. The spelling of English has changed much less than its pronunciation since Chaucer's time.
This in turn is linked to the factors of formality and prestige. Writing vs. speech linguistics differences. Permanency. Writing is more permanent than the spoken word and is changed less easily. Once something is printed or published on the internet, it is out there for the world to see permanently. In terms of speaking, this permanency is present only if the speaker is recorded but they can restate their position. Quickness. Apart from formal speeches, spoken language needs to be produced instantly. Due to this, the spoken word often includes repetitions, interruptions, and incomplete sentences. As a result, writing is more polished. Punctuation. Written language is more complex than spoken language and requires punctuation. Punctuation has no equivalent in spoken language. Feedback. Speakers can receive immediate feedback and can clarify or answer questions as needed but writers can't receive immediate feedback to know whether their message is understood or not apart from text messages, computer chats, or similar technology. Immediacy. Writing is used to communicate across time and space for as long as the medium exists and that particular language is understood whereas speech is more immediate. Use of slang. Written and spoken communication uses different types of language. For instance, slang and tags are more often used when speaking rather than writing. Skills. Speaking and listening skills are more prevalent in spoken language whereas writing and reading skills are more prevalent in written language. Usage. Tone and pitch are often used in spoken language to improve understanding whereas, in written language, only layout and punctuation are used. The purpose of all language is to communicate, that is, to move thoughts or information from one person to another person. There are always at least two people in any communication. To communicate, one person must put something out and another person must take something in. We call this output and input. I speak to you, output, my thoughts go out of my head. You listen to me, input, my thoughts go into your head. You write to me, output, your thoughts go out of your head. I read your words, input, your thoughts go into my head. So language consists of four skills, two for output, speaking and writing, and two for input, listening and reading. We can say this another way, two of the skills are for spoken communication and two of the skills are for written communication. Spoken. Speaking. Mouth. Listening. Uh. Written. Writing. Hand. Reading. I. What are the differences between spoken and written English? Are there advantages and disadvantages for each form of communication? Status. When we learn our own, native, language, learning to speak comes before learning to write. In fact, we learn to speak almost automatically. It is natural. But somebody must teach us to write. It is not natural. In one sense, speaking is the real language and writing is only a representation of speaking. However, for centuries, people have regarded writing as superior to speaking. It has a higher status. This is perhaps because in the past almost everybody could speak but only a few people could write. But as we shall see, modern influences are changing the relative status of speaking and writing. Differences in structure and style. We usually write with correct grammar and in a structured way. We organize what we write into sentences and paragraphs. We do not usually use contractions in writing, though if we want to appear very friendly, then we do sometimes use contractions in writing because this is more like speaking. We use more formal vocabulary in writing, for example, we might write the car exploded but say the car blew up, and we do not usually use slang. In writing, we must use punctuation marks like commas and question marks, as a symbolic way of representing things like pauses or tone of voice in speaking. We usually speak in a much less formal, less structured way. We do not always use full sentences and correct grammar.
The vocabulary that we use is more familiar and may include slang. We usually speak in a spontaneous way, without preparation, so we have to make up what we say as we go. This means that we often repeat ourselves or go off the subject. However, when we speak, other aspects are present that are not present in writing, such as facial expression or tone of voice. This means that we can communicate at several levels, not only with words. Durability One important difference between speaking and writing is that writing is usually more durable or permanent. When we speak, our words live for a few moments. When we write, our words may live for years or even centuries. This is why writing is usually used to provide a record of events, for example a business agreement or transaction. Speaker and listener forward slash writer and reader. When we speak, we usually need to be in the same place and time as the other person. Despite this restriction, speaking does have the advantage that the speaker receives instant feedback from the listener. The speaker can probably see immediately if the listener is bored or does not understand something, and can then modify what he or she is saying. When we write, our words are usually read by another person in a different place and at a different time. Indeed, they can be read by many other people, anywhere and at any time. And the people reading our words, can do so at their leisure, slowly or fast. They can reread what we write, too. But the writer cannot receive immediate feedback and cannot, easily, change what has been written. How speaking and writing influence each other. In the past, only a small number of people could write, but almost everybody could speak. Because their words were not widely recorded, there were many variations in the way they spoke, with different vocabulary and dialects in different regions. Today, almost everybody can speak and write. Because writing is recorded and more permanent, this has influenced the way that people speak, so that many regional dialects and words have disappeared. It may seem that there are already too many differences that have to be learned, but without writing there would be far more differences, even between, for example, British and American English. So writing has had an important influence on speaking. But speaking can also influence writing. For example, most new words enter a language through speaking. Some of them do not live long. If you begin to see these words in writing it usually means that they have become real words within the language and have a certain amount of permanence. Influence of new technology. Modern inventions such as sound recording, telephone, radio, television, fax or email have made or are making an important impact on both speaking and writing. To some extent, the divisions between speaking and writing are becoming blurred. Emails are often written in a much less formal way than is usual in writing. With voice recording, for example, it has for a long time been possible to speak to somebody who is not in the same place or time as you, even though this is a one-way communication, we can speak or listen, but not interact. With the telephone and radio telephone, however, it became possible for two people to carry on a conversation while not being in the same place. Today, the distinctions are increasingly vague, so that we may have, for example, a live television broadcast with a mixture of recordings, telephone calls, incoming faxes and emails and so on. One effect of this new technology and the modern universality of writing has been to raise the status of speaking. Politicians who cannot organize their thoughts and speak well on television win very few votes. English checker. Aspect, a particular part or feature of something. Dialect, a form of a language used in a specific region. Formal, following a set of rules, structured, official. Status, level or rank in a society. Spontaneous, not planned, unprepared. Structured, organized, systematic. Note, instead of spoken, some people say oral, relating to the mouth or oral, relating to the ear. The above are linguistically the major differences between spoken language and written language. Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. 
Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups and he has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study in a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join at https colon double forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash 32913646414908384.